While loops can be really useful in certain scenarios, but there are a few use cases where you shouldn't use while loops. So what I'm talking about is using while loops to check a value when you don't really need to. So let's say I have this coins value, right? This represents a player's coins in my game. And I wanted to constantly check that value to maybe update it in a text label or update it somewhere else to constantly get that value. Maybe you're a beginner coder, you don't really know the best practices, and you go with while true do, put a task I'll wait in here, and you like print coins or get constantly get this value and maybe uh, update it to a text label. Now, I'm not saying this is really bad code, but this could be organized a lot because we are constantly checking coins, the, co the value of coins, and maybe the coins value doesn't change for an extremely long time. Then these constant checks aren't really necessary, are they? If we are constantly checking a value and it doesn't change, then why are we even trying to get the new value? It's not changing and we are constantly running a loop to check it when it's not changing so how can we organize and optimize this well there is an event for values called changed and we can use this changed event to connect it to a function and get the new value which is a number here we can get it here and this value is equal to you know the new value of the coins so this only runs when the value of coins is changed and there's no unnecessary loops uh, you know it only gives us the new value and we aren't getting old redundant values that we don't need and maybe let's say you don't really use values because you know we we have attributes now to use and they're more optimized than values well I have this attribute in my base plate I call the coins it's a number and we can do the same thing with attributes we get our coins attribute up here and we can say game dot workspace dot base plate get uh, get property change signal and then we would put in our property name which is coins and then connect function and there we go so now using these events and get property change signal we only get the value when it's updated and we aren't constantly checking for a value that does not change and just so you guys know, I'm not only talking about while loops, this also accounts for the run service events. Also run service events, I would prefer you guys use the changed events because these run service loops are basically doing the same thing, running a lot and constantly checking for a value. And I'm making this video because I actually used to do the same thing. I didn't really use changed events or anything like that and I was constantly checking for a value using run service. And another thing we can use to organize our code is by using math.clamp and putting in values like the x, the minimum, and the maximum number. So basically what math.clamp does is if we put in a say a number called 10 and we have a minimum number of 0 and a maximum number of 100 and we were to print this, this would give us a value of 10. And this is because 10 is between 0 and 100 and if the number we put here was greater than 100 our maximum number then that number our x would be 100 and let's say this was negative 10 if we were to print this and this was negative 10 then it's less than our minimum number so our x number would be 0 and so how this could be useful using math.clamp is let's say you have a health bar system and so this represents our player's health in our game. And we want to make sure our player's health is between 0 and 100 or whatever uh, amount of health you want in your game. And let's say we're also making a health, actual health bar display that we can uh, display on our screens. You know, a custom health bar, a new health bar instead of the regular default Roblox one. And we wanted to clamp the player's health before actually displaying it because there could be an exploiter that sets their health to be, you know, a thousand. And we could use math.clamp to make sure that value isn't actually being updated to the health bar or anything like that. So instead of constantly having to check if the health is greater than zero, 
and less than a hundred we could just say math dot clamp and put in our health value put in our minimum number and like the maximum number of health in your game which i'm going to say a hundred here and that saves us a lot of time a lot of if statements a lot of confusing stuff and we automatically get the clamped value from here so let me show you guys bad code examples and a good code examples from this video all right so let's say we're running with the health bar idea again and we are constantly checking for the health if it changes and whatever whatnot so we're in a wild true do loop and we're also going to say if health is greater than zero and health is less than 100 which means uh, that our health is all is in between 0 and 100 and we can update it or I should probably also put equals here and yeah we are constantly checking for the health value and making sure it's between 0 and 100 and then maybe update it uh, to a health bar just like this I'm not saying this is bad code but it is a little bit unorganized and it could be tidied up a little bit and so a good code example would be something like uh, getting the characters humanoid and saying something health changed or humanoid dot health dot changed like this. So saying something like humanoid health changed and connecting it to a function and getting our health again. And then also using the math dot clamp method to then put in our health and then our zero and a hundred and then we can later get this easy value updated to a health bar just like this and yeah guys this was today's video if you guys did learn something from this video or you guys enjoyed this video please hit the like button and the subscribe button I'll see you guys in the next video peace